Colossians 1, 22 was our emphasis, but the entire portion of scripture has become my very new favorite portion of scripture, Colossians 1, 15 to 23. And uh, 22 is found in there. Now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through his death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. The entire passage there focus on Jesus Christ because Paul is writing about syncretism he's, he's based, which devalued Christ, basically saying Christ is, and our word for that week was preeminent. Christ is preeminent, supreme over all. There is no one better than Jesus Christ. So Paul in his letter elevates Christ back to his rightful position for the people at Colossae. Today we are entering into a third area in the book of Colossians. And I want you to listen for what today's word might be. The hint is, it's an easy one. Now I rejoice in what I'm suffering for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness. The myth... <coughs> The mystery, I must have inhaled too much smoke at that campfire <laughs> last night, <laughs> pardon me. The mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you the hope of glory. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. I want you to know how hard I am contending for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not met me personally, my goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches and com of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you with fine-sounding arguments. For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. Will you pray with me? Lord God, would you open now your word to us? This amazing letter from Paul to the church at Colossae, shared with the church at Laodicea, to the Christians there so long ago. They were, Lord, being distracted by fine-sounding arguments, and we pray that you would help us to guard our hearts so that we may know you and the truth of your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. How many of you love reading your book and getting to the end to discover what it was all about? That's pretty cool, right? How many of you are watching a movie and you watch incrementally from the beginning to the end and you love kind of trying to figure it out, and then at the end you discover, ah, that's what was happening. How many of you love it when a friend comes up to you and say, oh, can you believe what happened? Can you believe the butler actually did it? And you say, oh, I didn't get that far yet. You love that part too? Not so much. 
we don't like spoilers, and that's why we have spoiler alerts, right? Like, don't tell me what happened. I don't want to know. I'm watching this mystery, and I want to figure it out for myself. Did you discover the word? We heard it three times in our passage today. Mystery. Paul is about to unveil a mystery that the Christians had gotten confused about. The mystery, I'm not going to tell you. Hang on as we discover together what is this mystery that Paul is talking about. Now this isn't the first letter that Paul has written about the mystery. We see it in all of Paul's writings, in all of the letters, he refers time and again to the mystery. Let's just review the scripture that we read together and find out where is it that it has been written about, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages. That's what he says in verse 26, but is now disclosed. The mystery that has been hidden for ages, but is now disclosed. I want you to know my goal is that they may be encouraged in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ. Know the mystery. That's the first thing I want you to remember today. Though our word is mystery, I want you to know the mystery, which is Christ. Know the mystery. It seems like an oxymoron. Two words that don't really go together. They're almost opposites. Mysteries are meant to be unknown. But Paul is saying, know the mystery, which is Christ. Jesus Christ was hidden for ages. For ages and ages, God's chosen people, the children of Israel, had kind of kept to themselves the truth about being chosen. They thought everything, all the information was just for them. But now the mystery is being made known also to the Gentiles. That's us. We weren't born Jewish. We weren't born into the race of the Israelites. But all of the Old Testament talks about God's chosen people. Now, however, God is grafting in, bringing together this wonderful mystery, namely Jesus Christ, that is not for the Jews. As a matter of fact, the Jews had rejected Christ. And so the door was open for Gentiles to understand that Christ is supreme. That goes to last week's sermon. Christ is all that they need. Back in the Old Testament, the people experienced God in a couple of different ways. As the children of Israel crossed through the desert, do you remember what led them? By day, it was a pillar of fire, a cloud, a pillar of cloud by day, and then at night, so they could see it just like last night, it was a pillar of fire. That was God leading them, the children of Israel. We read about it in Exodus chapter 13. By day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night, in a pillar of fire to give them light so that they could travel by day or by night. God was in this external thing, which was a pillar of cloud or fire, depending on night, on day or, or night. And then God met with, with Moses. He gave them the, his, the Ten Commandments, but he also gave them, gave to Moses an understanding of what God wanted, and that was a tabernacle, a place where God would dwell. And throughout Exodus then, after the, after the children of Israel were walking through the desert, God gave specific information about this tabernacle, because it was where God would dwell. 
listen to this from Exodus chapter 40, that the cloud, the same cloud, covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. So in Old Testament times, God was made known, God was present in external things. God was living in the tabernacle. But now, the mystery is revealed. Jesus Christ has come to dwell, not only on earth, but, let's read together, on, I thought it was 2-2, two, two, but it's not. Well, here it is. I found it. Verse 27. Chapter 1, verse 27. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is not only Christ, but Christ in you, the hope of glory. So Paul is writing because the, the Gnostics, the heresy of the day, is that Christ is is only for a select few, those who are smart enough or wise enough or understanding enough. And Paul is saying it's for all people, including the Gentiles. Christ is for all. And no longer is God going to be present in an external way. Instead, Christ is going to live and dwell in you. The tabernacle of the Old Testament, be, we become the tabernacle because Christ lives in us. So the mystery, my friends, is not only Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ in you. We're Americans. So we tend to hear that as a very individualistic way. Christ lives in me. And it's true. Christ lives in you. But imagine, if you will, going to a diner locally or in some other part of the country. And you're there with a few friends. And the server comes to your table and says, how are you doing today? Is the server just talking to one person? or addressing all four or five of you at the table. The word you in our language can be singular or plural. In this instance, Paul is writing in the plural, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So what are some words that you might hear the server say depending on where you live? What are some plural words for you that we tend to use? Can let's hear them. Shout them out. Y'all. Y'all. Okay, if you're down south. Christ in y'all. <laughs> Christ in y'all, right? What else? Yins. Yins. You go to Pittsburgh, Christ in yins, right? Christ in yins. All of yins. What else? <laughs> No one heard use. <laughs> use, we hear it, I don't know, Chambersburg, I don't think I have heard it too much, but over in York, Christ in use. <laughs> okay, anything else? We said y'all, but even you all, Christ in you all. How about in Warren, Pennsylvania, where I grew up? I don't get in trouble for this, but I'm surprised that females don't take offense. You guys. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Christ in you guys. Christ lives individually in each of us as we invite Christ to do so. But Christ lives in y'all. In the body of Christ, Christ is made known to our world. So the mystery, my friends, is not only Christ, is not only Christ in you, but Christ in in y'all, as we represent Christ to our world. And so we come to our, 
our domino emphasis, fortunately I can put it either way, <laughs> two, two. My goal is that they, y'all, may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that y'all may have the full riches of complete understanding so that you may know the mystery of God, namely Christ in you. Amen. As we move to our time of communion, I invite the servers to prepare to come up. We're going to take a moment as we quiet our hearts before God and invite the Spirit of God to increase our knowledge, our understanding, and reveal to us anything that may be standing in the way between us and God. Would you examine your heart and allow the Spirit of God to examine your heart as we come to this most sacred time? God's word says that we confess our sin. God is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thanks be to God. On this day.